Rifleman. Starring Chuck Connors. He seems to be better. The doc says he'll be back in school next week. Well, we missed him. I remember when I had the measles. It took a lot of spoiling to get me well. <laughs> Something wrong? No. no. She's awful pretty for tar and feather, ain't she, Garth? Are we gonna go down and get her? Not yet. Not just yet. It's called Moby Dick. It's about a giant whale and a sea captain. The captain spends his life trying to catch that whale because it bit off his leg. Oh, hog? Hmm. Oh, huh. Well, the captain's heart is so full of hate and revenge that he... No, I don't think I'll tell you how it ends. You have your father read it to you. Can you do that, Mr. McKay? Sure will, Miss Adams. You're going to get both of us educated. I think that'd be just fine. Oh, my goodness, I'm going to be late for school. Oh. Thank you. Those are my suffrage pamphlets. Suffrage? You mean women voting? Yes. I'm starting a class in town tonight for the women on government. <laughs> government? Huh? Why not? Well, I... This is a very serious matter, Mr. McCain. Well, I, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings, Miss Adams, but uh, well, a woman voting is like racing a, a cow with a stallion. Uh, what I mean, Miss Adams, is I, I personally think that a woman would be happier attending the home. Maybe you'd like to read one of my pamphlets sometime. All right. After you finish Moby Dick. Sure thing, Miss Adams. Women are about to emerge, Mr. McCain. Independent, beautiful, and free. Asking no quarter from any man. Sure thing, Miss Adams. Bye, Ma. Bye, Miss Adams. Weren't you a little rough on her? Oh, now, Ma, she's obviously a nice, honest, intelligent woman and a fine school teacher. But this business about women voting. You think she's really serious? Oh, here, read for yourself. I'll go get your medicine, be back in an hour or so. You stay there, all right? All right. Would you mind telling me what's troubling you? Nothing at all, Mr. McKinney. Goodbye. Come on. Come on, Garth. Good morning, Miss Adams. Good morning. Hello, Garth. I had a feeling that was you back there on the road. Aren't you late for school? Garth. I said you were late for school. Garth, ain't you coming? What? Pa! Pa'll be mad, Garth.
What are you doing? School's been dismissed. Who are you? Now, it ain't a question of who. It's more of a question of why. And if I was you, I wouldn't ask it. What are you talking about? Who are you? What right have you to... I'm telling you to stay in that buggy. Garth, are these your kin? That's right. This is my pa. What did you tell him? The truth, school mime. That scare you? See what I got, Miss Adam? <laughs> that is. <laughs> you just follow us, lady. We've got some business in town. All right, let's go. Good morning, Lucas. How's Mark? Well, he seems to be a lot better. Doc says I can get this tonic refill for him. All right. Anything else? No, no, thanks. I'll be back for it. Ooh. Betty, what'd you get in? Some fancies from Kansas City. Can you keep a secret? Well, that depends. I don't know if I ought to show you these, but you're one man that I can trust at least more than the average male. Nice color. Uh-huh. Aren't they cute? What is it? It's a bloomer outfit. A bloomer outfit? Yes, we're going to wear them when we march in the street, Lucas. Look now, Hattie, don't tell me you women folk are serious about this. Marching in the street and women well, suffering. Never more serious in our lives. Mankind is a benevolent tyrant. Well, he's got to learn. Women are not cattle. Not anymore. Well, that's too bad. I was thinking of getting me a few head. You. Oh. <laughs> Get down from there. I said get down from there. Oh, he's only helping out, Marshal, since there ain't going to be no class tonight. Since when? Why, since Miss Adams decided to leave town. My son just told me school's been closed. That's right. Miss Adams is going to eat. You just ask her, she'll tell you. And until she does, you tell your boy to get down. Get down. There she is. Look what I found in her room. Well, now, we got a free thinking lady here, folks. And I always thought that you suffrage ladies was opposed to drank. What's your grudge, mister? Well, now, farmer, since we got mixed company here, let's just say that Miss Adams has elected to leave this veil of contentment and spread her evil somewhere else. <laughs> well, I'd like to hear that from her. What they said is true. I am leaving of my own free will. Ma'am, I think we've got a right to know the reason. All right. I'll tell you the reason. This is a narrow, vicious town filled with narrow, vicious people. You didn't feel that way this morning, Miss Adams. What changed your mind? Nothing changed it, Mr. McCain. I just took a good look around me, and I didn't like what I saw. Mr. Healy has a point. I am a free-thinking woman. I'd much rather take a good look at Hades than slave out my soul in this perdition of holiness. Stage is ready to leave, ma'am. Thank you. Okay, I'll take it. Out of my way, farmer. You drop those bags. Drop him. If you're under threat of any kind, Miss Adams... Go away, please. This morning, you told me and my son a story about a man who was filled with hate. It was a coincidence. Nothing more. Ah! Ah! 
Hard to figure. Cousin, you better send them women folks home. We're gonna do us a little celebrate. Man to man, huh, guy? <laughs> Maybe we're lucky she's gone. Feeling the way she did. Hogwash. I said hogwash. I'm ashamed of you, both of you. Miss Adams is a fine lady, and she's a finer school teacher. Anybody don't see that plain and clear just don't deserve knowing it. North Fork is never going to see another one like her. And you just let her ride right off. Shame on you. Now, Hattie, it's obvious the lady didn't want to stay. That's a cow-faced lie if I ever heard one. She was protecting somebody. You're sure of that, aren't you, Hattie? In here. In my heart, Lucas. That's all a woman needs to sense the truth. Where are you going, Lucas? You're going after that stage, just like I'd do if I was a man. Which I'm not, thank goodness. Cousin? Did you see that big farmer leave? Know where he's going? After the school marm. You in town, Lucas. I'd like to talk to Miss Adams, Joey. Now, uh, Luke, we got a schedule to make. You know that. Well, this will just take a minute. All right. One minute. Miss Adams? Please, Mr. McCain. I'd like you to hear me out. I'll speak my piece, and then you can get back on the stage. It won't take long. Well, I think you're a fine lady and a fine school teacher. You know, a school teacher is a mighty important person to a town. These same folks say that North Fork would be mighty lucky if they ever get another one like you. Then I guess they didn't listen to what Mr. Healy said about me. They listened, all right. They just didn't believe. They didn't believe that bottle of liquor either. They just hoped. It makes no difference. You heard what I said about them and their town. Your minute's up, Lucas. Miss Adams, it takes a special kind of person to get kids interested in doing their homework. You want to teach a class to the ladies in town, or to get up early and take a book to a boy that's sick. All right, we're leaving. Let's go, Bob. You just can't believe that someone who does all these things doesn't have a lot of love in her heart for the people. Why don't you come back to the ranch with me? You can decide later what you want to do. Suits me. Dollar even up. Now that's a bet now. Yeah, okay, buddy. All right, lady. You get in there and get him. Now it's a good thing. Come on, take him. Come on, take him. Pick him, lady. Bert. Come on, lady. Get in there. Come on, on. drink it, guy. Make a man out of you or kill you. Either way, suits me fine. Leave me be, Pa. Just leave me be. Come on, lady. Now, is that what you told little Miss Prim when she come chasing after you? Hmm? Yeah? Pa. Maybe there's some of it you ain't telling me, huh? I told you everything that happened, Pa. Uh, your ma used to lie to me. Thank you, Lady Bird, come on. 
Hello, Mark. Hello, Miss Adams. If you really want to cook that meal, Miss Adams, there's the kitchen. Good. How do you feel? Much better. Wonderful. I think you've been sitting up long enough, son. Maybe you better lie down for a while, huh? All right, Paul. Paul, I've been reading up on these pamphlets, and, well, wouldn't you have wanted more to vote? Well, I don't know, Mark. Maybe I better read up on it myself. Come on. Well? I think I'll make an omelet souffle. Do you have any cheese? Mm hmm And cream? Right here. And eggs? Fresh this morning. Good. And butter? Butter. And flour. And flour. Now all we're missing is a pan. Hattie Denton thinks you're protecting somebody. Can I tell you about it? If you want to. A bowl, please. Garth Healy thinks he's in love with me. He asked me to marry him. The boy? The boy. 19 and I'm 27. He's a lonely boy, Mr. McCain, shut off from all affection by his father. Lonely and in need of understanding. I used to talk to him, hoping I could be of some help. I didn't realize he was misinterpreting our friendship until just a few days ago. He suddenly blurted out that he was in love with me. I tried to tell him he was acting foolish, but he wouldn't listen. Then I finally told him I couldn't see him again. Then he left. But he was very bitter. And you figure he told his pa a different story? Just the opposite of what I've told you. That's the real reason Mr. Healy was driving me out of town. Well, why didn't you say something? Because I believe Mr. Healy would kill Garth if he knew he lied. I couldn't betray him, whatever he said. Would you beat these, please? You killed him! You Get killed him! Off me. He's loco! Loco! Nobody calls him loco! Leave him be, Pa. Leave him alone. Since when do you interfere with justice? Since when do you tell your Pa what to do? Chicken's dead, Pa. Chicken's dead. Haley. What's the trouble this time? No trouble at all, Marshal. No trouble. I always take care of my own, always have and always will. I think we've had about enough of you folks this afternoon, Mr. Healy. Now go on home. All right, Marshal, sure. We're just leaving anyhow. Oh, here. For the drinks. They're plum loco, all of them. I know. Hey, Paul Healy. Miss Adams ain't on that stage no more. That big farmer took her off and they've gone to his ranch. Well, now, ain't that nice. Gee, Jed, maybe McCain will give you one of his chickens. Yeah, Pa? Mind up, Jed. Pa, I... You mind up, Garth. Uh, pa, we can't... You heard me. Pa, I don't want another chicken. Might die, too. Well, now, that's a chance you have to take, Jed, when you're dealing with things that are weak. <laughs>
You've got to get out of here. They're coming after you, Pa and the rest of them. They're right behind me. Come on, we still have time. You could come with me. I'm not leaving, guys. You've got to. You don't know what he might do to you. <laughs> Please. Adele, listen to me. I wanted to hurt you. I'm sorry. Now, please, you've got to go away with me. Mr. McCain, make her listen to what me. What is it, boy? I want her to come away with me before it's too late. Well, she's done with running. No one's gonna bother her from here on. Now, you sit down. I'll get you some coffee. Mr. McCain. Just sit down. You come out here, I'm gonna come in there and drag you out. Now, do you hear me? Garth, don't make it any worse. He's not gonna hurt you, I'm telling you. I'll kill him first. Mr. McCain will handle him. No! No, this time I'm gonna stand up to him myself. All right, Garth, but not with the gun. If you're gonna stand up to him as a man, son, do as she says. Garth! Wasn't even man enough to shoot, now was you? Now you listen to me, Pa. You leave Miss Adams alone. What I told you about her and me was a lie. I was ashamed of the truth. You lied because you're weak. I got me two fine sons now, haven't I? One of them a weakling, the other one a fool. I ain't no fool, Pa. Shut up, Jed. You get that shirt off, Garth. I'm gonna learn you about lying. You leave him alone, Mr. Healy. Now, you keep out of this, McCain. This is Healy business. I'll tend to all the Healy business there is. Take back what you said, Pa. Gus. I ain't no fool, Pa. Get that Pa. shirt off. Pa, you gotta take back what you said. You shut up, Jed. Take back what you said, Pa! Shut up, you fool! <laughs> You live. Can I go get the doctor, Garth? Yeah, yeah you go on, Jeff. The Healy's busted apart by their own meanness. It was bound to happen. And so, gentlewomen of the gentler sex, we ask you to evaluate the meaning of the word freedom. We ask you to stand together now, holding hands against the common tyrant that enslaves us. Man? Mark, do you suppose we could go back to Moby Dick? In a minute, Bo. Hello, the house! Must be Hattie. Hello, Mark. How are you, Lucius? Fine. Too bad you have to miss the parade tonight. Mm, too bad. Well, here's the tonic, Mark. I've got the rush. Thank you, Hattie. You're welcome. Get up there. Maybe we ought to go back to Moby Dick, Paul. <laughs> 